everyone, and welcome to Our Town. I'm Carla Johnson. And I'm Josh Benson. Today we're visiting Pine Island, Minnesota, right off the banks of the Zumbro River. Now, you won't actually find an island in this fair city. It got its name from the Dakota Indians. They called this area Wazawida, or Island of the Pines, after a large stand of white pines that divides two forks of the Zumbro River that resembles an island. The first settlers arrived here in 1855, and the city was incorporated in 1878. Pine Island is located on Highway 52, just 15 miles northwest of Rochester, where it spans the borders of both Goodhue and Olmstead counties. Rich farmland, abundant timber, the river, and natural beauty were among the attributes that drew people to settle here. The dairy industry has played a significant role in the community since the early years, and Lando Lakes is a major employer today. The population of Pine Island is growing and the increase is attributed to a variety of very good reasons including a progressive business environment, strong work ethic, excellent schools and a great variety of recreational choices. One of the popular attractions for both residents and visitors is the DNR Douglas State Trail that stretches from Pine Island to Rochester. It's at the center of lots of activity on two separate trails. One designed for bicyclists, hikers and snowmobiles and the other for cross-country skiers and horseback riders such as Bob Noser and Colonel. Thanks for joining us out here on the trail. What, what is your club? Island Riders Saddle Club, Pine Island. And what do you enjoy about the trail? Oh, we uh, do a lot of riding on it, and uh, we have moonlight rides on it uh, some nights, and uh, a lot of people are using it, and uh, I enjoy all of the trail. As you can see, the trail passes through some spectacular scenery. Pine Island residents show off the city's architectural heritage in carefully preserved buildings along Main Street. City Hall, built in 1909, and two buildings on the Opera House block, circa 1895, are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. One of the distinctive City Hall highlights is the four-faced Seth Thomas Clock Tower, guarded by gargoyles. It's one of just four in the nation, and the clock still works just fine, ringing on the hour and half hour with its large bell. <laughs> The old creamery building near City Park is used for a variety of activities while a restoration project moves forward. And now with more on Pine Island, here's Carla with the mayor. Thanks, Josh. Pine Island Mayor Ken Markham and City Administrator Mark Valsing, thanks so much for joining us out here on the Douglas Trail. Mayor, if we can begin with you, talk to us a bit about the major street improvements going on in the city. Well, every town is going through, you know, strongly towns of Pine Island, and about growth and uh, with all the growth going on. We got uh, streets that need improvement, so we went with a major nine-year project. And uh, we started yesterday, no, today is the first day of the street, uh, removing all the, the streets in the southern part of the town, plus uh, curb, gutter, sewer, water, it's gonna be replaced, everything, so that we don't have to tear them up again. And, they were a little against it, the people, thought why, but uh, got to with uh, the sewer lines were bad underneath, so it's a good time to start. So we let bids out, they came back so good, we moved it up one year oh. with uh, good rates. Uh, so we're going to go as far as we can this year, then continue next. Hmm, wonderful. And Mark Valsing, talk to us about the really significant growth going on in Pine Island right now in, in terms of population. Well, Pine Island's seen uh, rapid growth probably since about 1997. Um, we've been averaging probably about 70 homes a year. Um, things slowed down a little bit last year, um, but this year they've picked up again to where they were back in 2000 and 2001. Um, and we're expecting, you know, with low interest rates and the proximity to Rochester that, you know, rapid residential growth is going to continue for the foreseeable future. And Mayor, I, I know a, a referendum for a new high school was recently turned down here in Pine Island, but there is still the thought that out there that eventually the high school, which is now adjoined to the elementary and middle school, might go off-site and become a building of its own. Where is that at? Well, right now, we, the, it was last fall, the referendum was turned down. They're looking on off-site for, they got the land picked out. Uh, is this the right timing of how much money it's going to cost? Uh, they always say it's going to go up if it's turned down. And now they know it was, I believe, at 40 million, what they were looking at. So they know they got to trim back a little bit, and uh, hopefully it goes. It should go through. And it's, you got to convince the people of the town, the older people, on set budgets, 
it's a big concern. And you just try it again and see what happens, and hopefully it goes through. We're, we're running out of room with uh, athletics and everything, so. Um, are you spraying for mosquitoes this year? Well, we should start. <laughs> <laughs> do you have money in the budget, or do you have to take it out of contingency? Well, we'll continue that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so it's going to happen. Yes. Yeah, all right. And then finally, sir, you were the chair of the Cheese Festival. You wear many hats in this town. That was just last weekend. We're going to see much more in just a moment on that. But how did it go? It went very well beside the rain, you know, with the... It started, we started the parade uh, Sunday at 2, and it was sprinkling then, a little bit of rain, and we got it off, the sun came out. Uh, we were very fortunate. The food stands were down a little bit, but that's with the way everything went. It went very well. Right. People made money. Wonderful. Ken yeah. Markham, thank you. Mark Falsing, thank you so much for joining us today. Josh, back to you. Thanks, Carla. You just heard the mayor talk about Pine Island's Cheese Festival. Well, 6 News reporter Sarah Colbert was there. She has these sights and sounds. From marching bands to the Shriners bikers, hundreds of people packed Main Street in Pine Island to see the Grand Parade, part of the town's annual Cheese Fest. I know they handed out some cheese during the parade to tie it all in, I suppose. <laughs> For Karen Moralt, the parade was a perfect way to spend time with her five kids. Motorcycle guys, those are the best. And those unicycles, lots of variety, lots of good stuff. As for her son Sam, collecting candy was a favorite. These. It's jelly beans. The parade also gave royalty a chance to shine. John Archer was crowned this year's king. I don't know just how to describe it. It's, it's uh, more or less a privilege uh, to be named uh, king for the day. And a privilege that's pretty short-lived. I get to wear the crown. I got to take it back though the first of the week, so <laughs> I don't get to keep it. <laughs> what Archer does keep are memories of past festivals along with what put this town on the map. Pine Island at one time was known, uh, was probably one of the bigger producers of cheese in the state of Minnesota. What would be a cheese fest? Well, without cheese. All the folks that come down to the Midway get to partake in a free sample of cheese. This year they've given away over 80 pounds within the past three days. Cheddar and Swiss, and then there's jalapeno. They think it's a mild cheese and they get it and it's good hot cheese but not as big as one block of cheese made back in 1911. It was three tons, 6,000 pounds of cheese on a railroad car. They came, they made it and that was on a railroad car and they went up to the state fair with it. So it was the biggest uh, cheese around. To be remembered for many years to come. In Pine Island, Sarah Colbert, 6 News. Stay with us when our town, Pine Island, returns. We'll talk about how cheese is made and the Gaelic tribe will perform for us at the old creamery building. Welcome back to Our Town, Pine Island. I'm Josh Benson. We're going to turn up the action a little bit now and talk to someone who can answer some tough local questions like, who's the big cheese? But seriously, Pine Island and cheese go way back. So we sent 6 News reporter Natalie Sense out to learn how cheese is made at Lando Lakes. It's the kind of place that makes you go, mmm, mmm, moo. Cheetos, yes. Uh, that is uh, uh, one of our big, big items that we do manufacture here. Land Lakes Cheese Processing Plant in Pine Island is where Superintendent Glenn Rassau makes the powder that tops your tasty treats. The dry cheese is what I said, it goes to snack food companies where they put it on as a seasonings, uh, as part of a, a, like a cheese uh, coated corn curls or uh, we use it into uh, seasonings for nacho seasonings, cheddar and sour cream, all kinds of different seasonings that the snack food industry sells. As the last standing food processing plant in Minnesota, Pine Island can smile and say cheese because the plant won't be leaving anytime soon. So there's a good milk supply here and that's why uh, it originally was built here. And Land Lakes isn't too keen on letting visitors in either. We don't want to bring in an organism that uh, would be harmful to the, anybody that would eat it, so we, we do restrict the access. Seen as though they make enough cheese powder to fill 15 semi-trucks every week, it's no wonder why our neighbors to the east 
can't compete. Wisconsin. Where's that? <laughs> so the next time someone asks you why your fingers are all orange and yellow, tell them it's because of the Land of Lakes cheese processing plant in Pine Island. For Our Town Pine Island, I'm 6 News reporter Natalie Sens. Thanks, Natalie. We're now joined by the Director of Economic Development for Pine Island, Abraham Algadi. Mr. Algadi, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Now, something interesting with Pine Island is the big economic shift for business in downtown Pine Island. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the traditional Main Street, obviously, is uh, occupied by mom and pa shops, by a lot of, a lot of family-owned businesses. And we, we all know what happened in that, you know, in terms of competition, in terms of uh, competing with, reg you know, regional economic centers. Uh, so there, over the years, there has been a shift more and more towards uh, uh, probably a little bit more towards services, a little bit more towards entrepreneurial type businesses, you know, like little, uh, little uh, manufacturing operations. Uh, we have a good example here in town, uh, PTM, one of our main employers, uh, that obviously started as, uh, as uh, a small job shop, you know, ended up being uh, one of the main manufacturers in the area, like metal stamping and plastic, you know, plastic injection molding. Land of Lakes, obviously, is uh, an outgrowth of the original uh, cheese fest. I mean, cheese uh, factory here in town. Um, that became later uh, Minnesota Cheese Producers Association, and now it's uh, Land of Lakes. Okay. You know, um, that has a very active, very productive uh, plant here in town. Again, one of our main employers. Right. DS Manufacturing, uh, again, is a, a, another manufacturer. On Main Street, though, going back to what I was talking about a little earlier, you see a healthy mix today of retail, financial services, uh, 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 regular services, uh, whatever it may be, uh, gift shops, uh, restaurants. So it's, it's healthy from that standpoint. And this is the, an optimum size for us. This is a good size for us to maintain the healthy mix that we have. How about in terms of getting to these businesses? Tell, talk to me a little bit about the transportation through Pine Island. Well, that's, I think it's not much of a challenge right now, but it will be a challenge as we continue to grow. Uh, we are somewhat limited by the crossing that we have north and south, you know, on either section of town crossing the Zumbro. Uh, we are only limited to the Main Street Bridge right now. We're hoping as part of our planning process, which we just completed, to, to uh, pinpoint a location for an additional crossing. Again, that will interact appropriately, if you will, as we continue to grow with Highway 52, uh, and, and the traffic that Highway 52 brings, and also with the two interchanges we are projecting to have along the highway as Highway 52 grows and becomes more of a limited access highway. Sounds good. Sounds like we're on the right track here in Pine Island. Absolutely. Mr. Yes, Guy, thanks a lot for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. Have a great day. You thanks. bet. Up next, a local musical treat when our town Pine Island returns. Welcome back to Our Town Pine Island, everybody. I'm Carla Johnson, here with Jerry Vettel, who maintains the town's unique clock. Mr. Vettel, tell us about it. Okay, it's a uh, four-face Seth Thomas clock installed at the same time the building was constructed, about 1909. I think the clock says October 1909 on its nameplate. It has four faces. The dials are four feet in diameter. Uh, I've been keeping it running, kind of maintaining it since about 1980, when my uh, youngest or my oldest daughter started winding it. I I wound it for a while. She wound it while till she finished high school. My next oldest wound it till he finished high school, and on to the third one. Then I wound it for a while, and the middle one came back and wound it some more. So he's still winding it. <laughs> it's all in the family. It's in the family as far as that part goes. It's uh, unique. There's only four of them left like that in the country. Uh, most of them been electrified. This one is still all mechanical. You have to crank 1,500 pounds of weights up once a week wow. to keep it running. All right. Mr. Vettel, thank you so much. You're we welcome. appreciate it. Josh, back to you. Thanks, Carla. We're now joined by the Gaelic Tribe, a music group from Pine Island. And with me is Harmon Pierce. Harmon, can you introduce the rest of the members and tell us a little bit about your music? Sure, I'd love to. Well, um, to my right is Joe Peterson. And he plays the Bauron, a uh, traditional Irish frame drum. In front of me here is Martha Millman. She plays, she's our flutist extraordinaire. Um, Jay Millman is our uh, composer, arranger, and uh, fiddler, and, and he also plays a little whistle. 
And uh, Carrie keeps the models on honest, keeps him honest on fiddles, and uh, she plays, she sings a little bit too. I'm sorry. <laughs> Great. And what's this first tune you got for us? The first tune is Tam Lin. It's a just traditional dance uh, reel. Okay. With that, the Gaelic tribe. There's a lot more to come here on Our Town, Pine Island. Thanks for joining us for Our Town, Pine Island, everybody. Be sure to join us next week at this time when we travel to Zambroda. We'll show you Minnesota's only covered bridge and talk a little bit about the Covered Bridge Festival. Sounds like a lot of fun. Until next time, we leave you now with another number from the Gaelic Tribe. Have a great week, everybody.